The Holberg Suite, Opus 40, or more properly, from the time of Holberg, subtitled Suite in the Old Style, is a five-movement suite based on 18th century dances, composed by Edward Grieg in 1884 on the occasion of the celebration of the 200th anniversary of the birth of humanist and playwright Ludwig Holberg. It is an example of 19th century music containing a recovery of the form and musical styles of previous centuries. It can be compared to a not-so-famous piece such as A la Chapelle 16 by Franz Liszt, with whom, incidentally, Greg studied for a period of time in Italy, or something that will be written a little later, the Antiche Arie e Danze by Ottorino Respighi. This suite was originally written for piano and transcribed for orchestra after the premiere. The structure consists of a corpus of dances, a homage to Holberg's time. After a vigorous prelude, there is a sarabande in the time of Andante, followed by an elegant gavotte, which develops internally into a musette. After this, we find an aria, rich in legacy of the Bach's arias, written in the tempo of Andante religious. The suite ends with a quintessential Provencal dance, the Rigodon. Hello everyone, I'm Gemma Griglio, and I welcome you to a new episode of Conducting Bills. If you're new here, this channel is all about classical music, score analysis and conducting tips. I want to thank all of my patrons for making this series possible. Now, on with Greg. The movement starts with a very rhythmic theme in an exuberant G major, insisting on a cell that will be the backbone structure of the entire movement. Only eight bars later, we hear a very lyrical theme. Notice how underneath the rhythmical cell serves as an accompaniment. The end of the phrase brings back the rhythmic cell in the foreground with an arpeggio in the key of the dominant and the repeat takes us back to the beginning. In this very short and very compact sonata form, this exposition leaves immediate room to the development, quite larger in length. A cascade of arpeggios take us back to G major and to E minor. And at letter B, the rhythmic cell returns in the second violins, while the first, split into three parts, play a series of chords. The sound is enriched by the pizzicato of the violas at first, and two cello solos later. The rhythmic cell takes over. And we land on the recapitulation. After the second theme is played in octaves, the coda of the movement is introduced once again by the rhythmical cell. The Sarabanda is an ancient love dance born in Spain, presumably in the 16th century, but in turn imported from distant Arab and Persian cultures. It is described by the Iberian poet Miguel de Cervantes, his is one of the very few written testimonies, since in 1583 this dance was banned publicly for obscenity. On a rhythmical level, it is built on a regular cycle of three impulses, of which the second is the strongest and is joined to the third, while the first remains single and corresponds to the enthralling steps of the dance. The theme is introduced by the second violins and violas, big easy, creating a very warm sound. Notice the rhythm that appears most in these first few bars. It's the same rhythm of the repeating cell of the first movement. The first violins in their low register and the cellos join in four bars later. A second part sees a small echo of the violas to the first violins. and a solo cello, playing with the same material. Notice the texture at letter F, where the cellos are divisi into multiple parts, accompanied by a single double bass. This kind of sonority is what sets this work apart, 
perfectly intertwining musical forms from the Baroque period and soundscapes from the 1800s. The movement ends with an unexpected crescendo. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button right below this video and ring the bell so that you will get notified every time a new video comes out. For more in-depth analysis, conducting technique and conducting exercises, look on my website where you can find more than 100 videos and follow my Facebook group. And if you want to support this series, you're always welcome to do so on Patreon. All the links are in the description. Let me know in the comments what you think about this piece. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, then in the next episode of this series, we'll keep going with this wonderful work. In the meantime, please continue to enjoy music and be well. Ciao! The markings and the accents. By looking at the score alone, this is what visual score study is about, you can gather that your gestures should be small in general, slightly larger, and with a quick rebound to account for those